Hi there guys and girls. Today we're going to be talking about um, quite a common species. So in a lot of these videos we try and do species that are asked for or species that are um, that we get a lot of attention from or that guys don't know about. That's what I know. Um, by the way, if you guys do have any species recommendations or species that you really want me to talk about, put it into the comments below um, and we'll get to it as soon as we can. The, obviously the, the more popular the, the requests are, the, the easier it is for us to do. We sort of prioritize those. But yeah, comments down below. Today we're going to be talking about the albacore tuna, also known as the long fin tuna, probably more commonly known as the long fin tuna because it's a little bit more descriptive than albacore. Um, overall coloration wise, um, talking barrel shaped, normal tuna shaped, um, normal tuna color, um, dark on top, silvery on the bottom. But the big defining feature, as the name sort of highlights up at the top, long fin tuna. They've got these uh, pick fins that are extremely long, um, sort of go halfway down the body or more um, if you had to put them from the front to the face. Now, scientific name uh, Tunis alalunga and um, it doesn't really give you much there but it's a, a, a very distinctive tuna species luckily now you do get some of them that get confused big eye tuna for example often get mixed up with all sorts of others but um, long fin at least is something very very easy to do because of that very very long pick fin that they have on both sides in terms of uh, movements and stuff like that they're migratory they generally live the data has shown they like to live in seas all across the world from between 10 and 20 degrees Celsius. Now, that's quite a big range, um, but they move from your temperate waters into your tropical waters to spawn. So, from the colder into the warmer areas spawn and then obviously let the, the fry or whatnot drift back down to the cooler waters. That's generally how the circulation patterns work. Um, opportunistic predators, they, this is where as they're opportunistic, they're going to take advantage of any sort of prey items that are available. And that's what the pole line fishery has really done beautifully. It's something that, um, that the people have been able to adapt very nicely and take advantage of. The, if you have never seen pole line fisheries at work, it's something that you really need to search on YouTube. They are sort of uh, wild world machines. They've got guys with poles, piece of uh, like probably about 1.2 more or upwards probably closer to, 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 to two more um, and just on the end they generally have a little skirt on a on a big hook generally barbless and how this works is the boats themselves have got water jets that go all the way around and the water jets spray the water into the into the sea and that forms almost like it looks like a feeding frenzy so it gets that bubble the bubbles going and everything and the tuna misinterpret that as bait fish that are being smacked. Now the guys come with these poles, drop them in uh, the lure in the water, and they just pull it through that, that frothy water. And the tuna come up, see this little lure there, grab it, and the guys basically just pull that pole over their shoulder and just give it a little, uh, the way they do is incredible, just a little jerk, and that tuna comes off the hook, lands behind them on the boat, and the uh, hook's back in there. They can fill a boat up in no time at all. It's a very, very efficient method of catching them also gets the, um, because the tuna are, mig are migratory, they're moving around all the time. By doing this, you can now, you don't have to go and try and chase after them and try to follow them everywhere, which burns a lot of fuel. So it's a very economical way, very sustainable way of catching them as well. And it's actually how most of the, the long fin are caught. Now, age-wise on tuna and things like that, 13 years, I think is the maximum. Uh, the caught off the Canary Islands was about 40 kilos, but generally they're a lot smaller. Um, Looking at fish sort of under under 10 kilos as your your main catches and over being slightly bigger your 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 big fish or sort of noteworthy noteworthy catches they do catch them quite a lot on your lures uh, top waters and things like that not as much as we do here in case they're targeting them on poppers not long fin but yellow and down there it's more on spoons uh, occasionally live baits jigging spoons things like that so yeah anyway 13 years. 40 kgs and your full length of about 1.3 meters so they get you fairly large size not yellowfin size um, that 40 kilos is well, I don't think I've ever caught them that size here by us but one of those things um, and yeah it's a 
caught by a recreational line, as we mentioned, more on lures and things like that. And then, yeah, as mentioned, the commercial pole caught and, and line fishery as well, commercial line fishery. So, yeah. And then, last but not least, um, sort of management uh, criteria we need to look at. MPAs for these species, anything that's migratory um, or nomadic is not really going to be effective with MPAs because they're moving in and out of the area all the time. Your MPA isn't really going to do much for them, other than obviously protecting the bait fish if their bait fish congregate in areas and stay there. But things that move around, MPAs aren't really going to affect them. So it's one of those species that you more have to worry about catch regulations and things than actual protecting areas. So yeah, the longfin tuna. Um, another one of the tuna species, nice fast growing, so uh, as a pelagic species it's better to target those than your, your bottoms as we always mentioned. So yeah, long for tuna. Cheers guys.